introduce President Rodney Rogers. Thank you, Jason. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce the mayor of the city of Bowling Green, Dick Edwards. Mayor Edwards, thanks for being here today. <clears throat> So thank you and good afternoon. So it was in the late 1960s that Bowling Green State University started to compete in organized hockey. And so for more than 50 years, this program has found amazing success. And on days like today, I would uh, be remiss if I didn't reflect on some of the, the storied past of this, hist of, of this institution and this organization around hockey. So this hockey program has achieved the very best in the world. We've produced Olympic gold medalists, including two who played in the Miracle on Ice team, 10 total Olympians, two Hobie Baker Award winners, almost 20 All-Americans, responsibility for seven Stanley Cups, I'm gonna claim all seven of those, countless NHL players, almost a dozen current NHL GMs, head coaches and staff, the list goes on and on, and uh, I believe the Baltimore Sun described it best when they said in 2018, there is this great Bowling Green NHL takeover. That is a pretty amazing program, don't you think? So all of that type of success, the common denominator is that those individuals started their careers right here at Bowling Green State University in this program. And I want to make sure to thank the various donors and supporters of Falcon Hockey who are here with us today, the Slater family and others who have made such a difference in this great history of this program. And we are absolutely here to announce that our eighth head coach of the Bowling Green State University Falcon Hockey program. And now before I say his name though, I want to thank the AD Bob Moosebrugger and the screening committee for all of their great work. You know, uh, you, uh, Bowling Green State University is the U.S. News World Re Report Tier 1 institution, which means we compete at the highest level. We, we look for excellence in all that we do, and this program is one example of excellence. And I can uh, say, I think quite safely, that we will continue to focus on supporting intercollegiate athletics programs that certainly enhance our national reputation as a university, certainly enriches our learning community, supports our student athletes, and engages our alumni and friends across the world. And we can't do those, uh, we can't accomplish those goals without a robust hockey program. And so we are very pleased to welcome the eighth coach to Bowling Green State University to take over the leadership of the hockey program. Now, we have high expectations for this team, both on and off the, the ice, of course. And I think uh, we are all confident that Ty shares that commitment to continuing the great winning tradition here, winning um, lots of games, but also winning the right way. With experience at both the NCAA and the professional levels, um, Ty has uh, done amazing things here at Bowling Green. These past nine seasons, he served as our assistant head coach. And on the coaching staff, as you probably know, Ty was responsible for our defense. Under his leadership, our defense ranked number one in the country in goals against the average in the 18-19 season. That's a heck of an accomplishment, don't you think? And coming off of our first NCAA tournament appearance since 1990, it is important that we continue that positive momentum. And I uh, especially appreciate when those who are part of a strong foundation of an organization are given the opportunity to build upon that success and to lead us to that next level. This coach is prepared to do that, and we are so proud to have Ty as our next head coach. And so on behalf of Bowling Green State University, we are pleased that Ty, his wife Erica, and the children Peter, Ellie, and Kate are staying right here in Bowling Green, Ohio. Uh, I am already looking forward to the beginning of the next season in the Slater Family Ice Arena, and I certainly know our students, faculty, staff, and alumni, and friends, and fans 
will be ready to cheer on the Falcons. Ai Ziggy Zumba. Ty, welcome. Thank you, President Rogers. You stole my whole speech again. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we get a break from co head coaches' searches. Um, but uh, certainly appreciate your time and effort in this process. Um, I'm sure among all the complex issues here at the university, the head hockey coach search is one of the most challenging, for sure. And I mean that. This position is a, a very attractive position. Certainly these guys sitting, sitting right here, the hockey team, coming off 25 wins, an NCAA tournament appearance, great student athletes coming back for next year. This made this a great job for our a very competitive field. A program that's a legitimate top 15 program in the country, a program that has great support from the BGSU community, the Bowling Green community. Mayor Edwards, thank you for being here and from the BGSU students, the bleacher creatures. But we also have it from the very top, the Board of Trustees and Dr. Rodney Rogers. Thank you for your support. Please join me in a, a round of applause for Dr. Rogers. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my wife uh, for putting up with my short attention span, my loss of hearing. Um, I look forward to getting back to being uh, present with you. Um, thank you to Associate AD Jim Elsasser, who oversees our hockey program. Jim's one of our veterans in our athletic department and certainly has a, a great understanding of the history of our department and especially this hockey program. Our senior staff and our whole entire athletic department, thank you for all that you do for our student athletes. Certainly we've been distracted for a couple weeks, um, but you guys pick up the slack where I uh, obviously have been distracted the last couple weeks. So thank you very much. Dan Fisher, Kenny Goodrich, uh, Scott Jess, guys behind the scenes with this hockey program. Scott Jess, maybe not so much behind the scenes because he has mo more video board uh, appearances than anyone in this room. Uh, but those are the guys that are behind the scenes with our hockey program that mean a lot to these student athletes whose lives are affected as well during this process. So I appreciate your patience and your input during this process. He couldn't be here today. He told me he had to go make some money and I said, good, that's what we need you to do. Um, but uh, Scott Slater and the Slater family, uh, you guys have been very generous with this hockey program. Um, and we appreciate all the support that you've given us, the words of encouragement during this process, and certainly the support for this program. You, have, you, you are uh, really passionate about the program and certainly have been around this program for decades. So we appreciate your support. To the hockey alumni that reached out to me, um, I know a lot of you started the phone call saying, I don't like making this phone call. Um, I don't want to say this guy or that guy, but I, they wanted their voices heard. And I told them, I appreciate you taking the time, and I appreciate that you care enough to call me. So to the hockey alumni, I appreciate all your words of encouragement, your input, and I look forward to your continued support of getting this program to the next level. And Coach Eigner and the student athletes certainly deserve your support. To our hockey student athletes, we talk about it. We talk about change is hard, life, but that's part of life. Um, we talked about uh, student athletes having a voice in the way we run our program. And certainly you guys stepped up, gave me some thoughts, and I appreciate that. The senior leaders uh, of this program uh, were, were very thoughtful in what you guys thought you needed for this program. And I appreciate your patience again this affects your lives as well. So thank you guys very much. The search process, we felt we owed it to the university, to this hockey program, to the alumni, to make sure that we did a thorough search process. Um, it was, like I said, a great job, a great opportunity for somebody. A funny story, uh, prior to the job even being open, I pick up my seventh grader, Vincent, from basketball practice and I said, how was school today? He said, good. How was practice? Good. Got any homework? No. Typical seventh grade conversation. I said, so what do you hear about this hockey program of ours? Well, Coach Bergeron's going to take the job at Miami, and you're going to promote Coach Eigner. 
I'm like, well, if it's that easy, a seventh grader obviously would, would have done that. But we wanted to make sure that we explored every option that we had, not that we had anything against Ty and his family, but certainly uh, there was a great responsibility in making sure that we had the right person for this job. Two head coaches in the WCHA said this about Ty. He does it right. He recruits hard. Lots of admiration and respect. A great leader, a great teacher. Jerry York said this about Ty. Great student of the game, a great recruiter, a great family man. And we're certainly happy to have his family here today. Erica, Ellie, Kate, and Peter, thank you for joining us. Ty, Coach York finished. Ty is going to be a fantastic head coach. He has a burning passion to succeed. His enthusiasm has no limit. He's a proud alumnus of BGSU. He's been a huge part of this past nine year rebuilding process. He will focus on developing and graduating young men. He will lead this program to compete for championships. He will win it the right way. I am thrilled to announce the eighth head coach in BGSU hockey history, Coach Ty Eigner. <laughs> President Rogers. Number. Don't read anything into this. You're going to get this back, <laughs> and you're going to score way more goals in it than I ever did. So, trust me. All right? Thank you, President Rogers, and uh, thank you, Bob. So, uh, we were sitting down in the... Uh, I guess they call it like a green room, for lack of a better term. And the over-under on jokes today was seven. So I'm, I've got one in, so I've got six more to go. So make sure uh, my son's in charge of that. He's the brains of the Eigner operation, so we'll do our best here. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to President Rogers, to Bob Moosebrugger, Jim L. Sasser, the interview committee, and the board of trustees, and uh, the Slater family. Those are people that throughout this process over different occasions that I got a chance to meet with and sit down and, and talk about my plan and, and my vision for this program. And uh, I'm very grateful that ultimately they came to the decision that I was the right person to continue this process. Um, before I... I'm going to do my best today to keep this under control. You know, I watched uh, Berger's press conference uh, a couple weeks ago, and I felt like uh, hopefully I'd have the same opportunity at some point. And I know for Berge, it was really hard to get through without being emotional. And uh, it's something I respect and appreciate about him, and uh, I certainly feel the same way today. Um, I'm going to do my best to get through this without being a blubbering idiot, but uh, I can't make any promises. Joke number two. <laughs> Starting to feel it a little bit here. So, um, I want to thank my mom and dad, who were uh, both teachers and coaches. Uh, I told people throughout the interview process, you know, growing up in I, I was born in Wisconsin, and my mom and dad were both teachers and coaches, and they met in, in, high, er, in college at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, and they were both student athletes. And my dad played baseball and played basketball, and my mom ran track, and uh, had they not gotten divorced when I was eight and we moved to Minnesota, I probably would have been an undersized, slow white guard that was trying to go to Notre Dame and play, or point guard, sorry, that was going to play at Notre Dame. Um, but we moved to Minnesota, and across the street, was an outdoor rink and uh, every kid in the neighborhood played hockey and I'd never seen hockey, never thought about hockey, never played hockey. So actually at nine years old starting was a little late in terms of you know becoming a hockey player. 
So that's just what everybody else in our, in our uh, neighborhood did, and that's what my brothers and I did. And uh, the gentleman that kind of started that process for my brothers and I is a gentleman by the name of Chuck Grillo. And uh, Chuck introduced me to the game. He was the high school coach at the high school I eventually graduated from, and he and my mom were, were teachers together there. And uh, Chuck went on from coaching high school to uh, working for the Minnesota North Stars to eventually becoming the GM of the San Jose Sharks. And, and Chuck's the guy who introduced my brothers and I to the game and is also a mentor of mine. So I want to thank Chuck uh, for introducing me to the game and continuing to support me and my brothers. Um, Bob mentioned in Coach York in this process, you know, when I came onto this campus in the, in the spring of 1988, uh, I was just finishing my junior hockey career for the Rochester Mustangs in the USHL, and, and we'd won a national championship there and had, I think, 18 of our 20 guys went on to play Division I hockey. And I, I got off the plane, uh, I believe it was Toledo at the time, and Buddy Powers picked me up and brought me to, to this campus and to Bowling Green for the first time. And up until that point, my knowledge of Bowling Green was watching the 1984 National Championship game. And at that time, being a kid from Minnesota, I had a little bit of a relationship with the head coach at the University of Minnesota Duluth, Mike Sertich. And so I can, full disclosure, I was rooting for Minnesota Duluth to win that game as I was watching it in my basement as a kid. Um, prior to that, uh, I forgot to, to mention, um, for my confirmation gift when I was in eighth grade, Mr. Grillo, who was also at the time the goal judge for the Minnesota Gophers, took me to a, an NCAA tournament game where he was a goal judge. So I got to stand next to the goal judge box at old uh, Mariucci Arena in, in downtown Minneapolis. And at that time, they were playing Bowling Green. And I remember a big bearded guy who ended up being Ken Morrow and, and Mark Wells and, and, and that team that I believe was Coach Mason's team at the time and, and uh, some, some outstanding players. So I'd, I'd seen them play live one time, but certainly wasn't a fan. Uh, but thankfully, Coach York and, and Coach Powers and Coach Flanagan at that time believed in me and, and took a chance on a kid. And, uh, you know, Coach York has continued to support me throughout my process as a coach. I've uh, been fortunate enough to send some players his way when I was coaching high school hockey in Minnesota, and uh, I can't thank him enough for, for helping me throughout this process uh, in, in terms of interviewing for this job. Um, I've had a whole bunch of former teammates reach out to me throughout this process and ask, hey, Iggs, what can we do? You know, how can we help? And uh, I'm very, very thankful and appreciative for that. Um, I want to thank the, uh, the current players, both uh, for their support and, and, and for allowing me to be me. Um, I'm, I'm in incredibly excited to be the next head coach and to be your head coach. And I know in, in our discussions uh, at our end of the season meetings, uh, one of the things that, that Barry and I felt like we should do after Burge decided to make his decision and, and, and go to Miami, we felt like the current players, uh, we owed them an evaluation of their year since we were the ones who evaluated them and we were the ones who, who dictated how much or how little they played. So we felt like it was our responsibility to talk to them about their season and how they felt it was and what we thought they needed to do moving forward, whether we were going to be here or not. And, you know, I can say to a man, they're all incredibly excited about the future. And, you know, throughout the recruiting process, I know Barry and I talked to to President Rogers and talk to Jim and Bob and whoever else would listen about this program and we were confident that no matter who took over this program they were gonna take over a program that was in a good spot and had had been built the right way and that's a testament to the players that are here these kids are here for the right reasons you know I was you know very involved in the recruiting process of every player on that team you know Barry and I Burge afforded us the opportunity to do all the recruiting and he said you just let me know how I need to help and he would be a voice of reason in the recruiting process but the relationships and the evaluations were done by Barry and I so the history with some of these players goes back a long way and so I'm very thankful to have the opportunity to continue that with these guys they've been great and they are incredibly excited about the future whether I'm the guy standing up here or it was somebody else because they understand and they've had a part in building the standard and the standard is now in place, and, and it's because of their efforts and, and how they do things on a daily basis. I want to thank the Slater family again for the support. Uh, as a student athlete here, you know, I can remember going to the Slater family house for Thanksgiving dinners and, and different 
occasions over breaks when, when the dorms were closed and the dining halls were closed and the Slater family opened their doors to us and uh, now we're all a lot older and, and everybody's kind of spread out. But the fact that, that the Slater family has been involved for so long and continues to be involved and, and support it from an emotional and a financial perspective the way they do is incredible. And our program is, is very, very fortunate to have the Slater family involved. Um, I mentioned Burge and Barry, and you know, I, I wouldn't be standing up here today if Burge didn't take a chance on. If he didn't take a chance on me nine years ago. You know, I was uh, coaching high school hockey in Minnesota with the, with the goal of eventually being at this level and, and having sent a bunch of players on to this level and have, having had a bunch of interaction with college coaches in terms of the recruiting process and, and trying to recommend kids and, and get kids to the next level. Uh, I'd always thought, you know, this is what I want to do and I would love to be at that level if I could. And, uh, you know, when Burge told me he was going after the job, it was, uh, it was kind of funny. I said, well, I actually sent my resume. I'm not sure if I have a chance, but I sent it anyway. And uh, he just said, he said, you know, I, I don't know where it's going to go and I don't know how it's going to end up, but if I do get the job, I'd love to have you come back and, and, and be a part of this. And, uh, you know, we were talking about this downstairs, you know, and I got the question, you know, how much does it mean to you to be a part of this and, and what can you, where are you at in your head with this whole thing? And, and I know this, that nine years ago, um, when our then, I got to do the math, I, I was not a great math student in Bar. It doesn't matter, whatever names, whatever numbers I say, you're going to believe me anyway, right? So when our kids were, let's just say nine, seven, and five, for lack of, you know, for the numbers. So our kids were eight, six, and four. You, you know, take a number. Anyway, when they were young and we all jumped in the car and took a leap of faith to come ten and a half hours from Minnesota to work for a first-time head coach and take over a program that won five games, it was a little bit of a risk. It was a risk for Burge. And it was a risk for us. And uh, I 100% owe this opportunity to him. So thanks, Birch. You know, when I uh, got a chance to sit down with Bob and Jim in the first interview individually, um, I'd never really been through the process face to face. I didn't have to interview for this job nine years ago. You know, Burge told me, hey, you know, if I get it and you want to come, you're my guy. And uh, so I, I had never really gone through that process. Um, and one of the things that I talked about in that process was, you know, because I, I had a relationship for nine years with Jim. And, and Jim's been incredibly supportive of our efforts in trying to take this thing from a five-win program that was on, you know, the brink of being cut to a program that the standard is 25 wins, uh, playing for league championships in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, I wanted to, to try and articulate to them how I got here. And, uh, you know, those of you that know me pretty well know that I'm a pretty simple guy. And uh, I told them, I said, you know, what I'm about is my family, my faith, and the hockey team I'm coaching. That's really it. You know, I, I don't really have any aspirations of catching the biggest walleye on Lake Erie or having the course record at Stone Ridge. Uh, I, I have hobbies, but, but that's what I do. That's who I am. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that... I get to do what I do and enjoy what I do so much it has everything to do with my family. And I told uh, Jim and Bob that first interview that, you know, no one cares more about Bowling Green hockey than I do. No one's more passionate about Bowling Green hockey than I am. And, and no one eats and breathes and sleeps and lives it more than I do. But at the end of the day, the most important thing in, in my world is my family. And if, if you're not okay with that, then I can't be your guy.
So I, uh, I want to say thanks to Erica and Peter and Ellie and Kate for being, uh, being who you are. I love you for it. All right. So now that I got through that, um, you know, I, when I talked to Jim and, and Bob in that initial meeting to, to kind of introduce myself to them and let them know who I am and how I got here, I, I told them, you know, both my parents were, were coaches and teachers and, and uh, I really wasn't destined to do anything else. I was, you know, I was never going to split the atom or run 3M or, you know, run for president for all that matters. Um, this is kind of what I do, and I've always been intrigued by coaching. I've always been intrigued by teaching, and, you know, whenever I go places, uh, I remember watching a, a young man that we coached uh, back in Minnesota go play his first college game at the University of Minnesota, and, and my wife and I went to the game. He, he gave us tickets, and it was a unique experience for us, and, and Erica would hit me, and she's like, Ty, you're staring. You're staring, and she said that to me over the course of our 21-year marriage more than enough. But what I was staring at, I was watching the coaches. And I, was, and I was watching how the parents, we happened to be sitting in the parents' section, how the parents were, were reacting to who the coach was putting on the ice. And I could tell that this parent was pissed off because his son wasn't playing as much as she thought he should play. So I've always, that's just kind of who I am and how I've been wired. And I, and I grew up around, you know, I got hit by a discus when I was in the wrong spot as a young kid when my mom said, don't go over there because that's where they're throwing the discus. And I got hit by a discus. So I've grown up around athletics and I've been to basketball practices and baseball practices and track practices. And it's, it's, really, it's really all I know. So to be able to have this opportunity to be the next head coach here at Bowling Green, obviously it, it means the world to me. And I, I couldn't be more proud to be standing in front of you guys today. I really couldn't. And, and I do know this, that I know that there were a bunch of people involved in this process. And, in, and you know, I can, I can tell you guys, because you guys are sitting here today because you care about Bowling Green State University, you care about Bowling Green, and you care about our hockey program. And I can tell you this, as the new head coach of this program, there are a lot more people who care like you today than did nine years ago. Uh, the amount of people that want to be involved in this program today is far greater than it was nine years ago. It was not a destination for players. It was not a destination for a coach. It was, it was a, a place that had lost its way. And, and I say that with all due respect to everybody involved. But I do know this now, that this is a place where we say in the recruiting process, we tell kids, listen, whatever you need to be or whatever you want to be, you can do that here. You can be great. You want to play in the National Hockey League? Let us know how we can help. You want to go be a doctor? Let us know how we can help. You want to be a great husband and a great father? Let us know how we can help. We're going to try to be a great example in that way. And you can do whatever it is you're meant to do on the ice, off the ice, and beyond at Bowling Green. And that's what makes this place so special. And that's what makes this program so special. So. Um, if you guys are ready, I can start with the jokes and we can get rolling here, but um, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I got through this without completely breaking down, but uh, I guess I'll open it up to questions if, if anybody has any. Thank you very much. Okay, we do have a mic over here and over there. If there's any media who have questions, please raise your hands. We took some questions on Twitter as well for Ty, so some of these might be a little bit off the wall, and, and we'll start with one to loosen it up, and then we'll, we'll take a question from the media. Ty, prediction for the Minnesota Vikings record this season. We were just, actually, we were talking about that downstairs. Uh, you know, a funny thing about that is, is I, I said I grew up in Wisconsin, and my mom was actually a Green Bay Packer cheerleader when she was in high school. And uh, at that time they had high school students be cheerleaders and, and I kind of started to grow up a, a Packer fan but then we moved to Minnesota so I'm a Viking fan now and everybody else in my family uh, are Packer fans and, and my mom's father, my late grandfather, has had season tickets for the Packers for 
God knows how many years, but I, I, I'm cautiously optimistic with no disrespect to Kirk Cousins. I, I don't know that I have a whole bunch of faith in a Super Bowl championship, but, you know, I, I think the playoffs are realistic, I hope. Fantastic. <laughs> Any questions? Raise your hands, media, if you have a question. Back here for Jordan. Introduce yourself as well. Ty may know you, but... Hi, Jordan. Hi, Ty. Uh, Jordan Strack from WTOL 11. Um, you know how many people would like a chance to coach this program. Why do you think that you're the right guy at this time for this job? That, that question got brought up in the interview process. And, uh, you know, I... I told everybody that was involved in the process, you know, my resume is my resume, and my resume doesn't have Division I head coach on it. Um, but I do know that, that the experiences I had coaching high school hockey in Minnesota are real. And to me, coaching is coaching. Now, there's things that happen away from the rink that I had never been exposed to uh, as a high school coach. Um, but I do know that my experiences as a, as a high school coach, and I coached, you know, I coached kids that were four years old at different times over the course of summers at Minnesota hockey camp. So I think there's value in that. There's value in actually having to teach someone how to play or how to do something versus just having an elite athlete or a, or a professional player or a ready-made college player and, and having them come in and expect that they know what they're doing. So, you know, I, I, I greatly appreciate that there were a bunch of really qualified people for this job. And, and part of it motivated me, to be perfectly honest. You know, I, I think uh, Barry and Burge and I take great pride in what's gone on here for the last nine years. And, and I believe that that had something to do with me sitting up here today because, again, there wasn't a lot of people that wanted to be a part of Bowling Green Hockey nine years ago. And we, the, the thing Burge tried to instill from day one, or did instill from day one, was this is going to be about people, and we're going to try to do it the right way. And we're going to do it our way. And we're not saying it's the only way, but it's our way. And it was always about people, and it's going to continue to be about people. So we, we tried to take you know, steps in the right direction in every facet of the program. And, and we, I just felt like, you know, over the past nine years, I don't know in our time, there's been a bunch of coaching changes across college hockey, but I don't know if anyone ever walked into um, a more difficult situation than Burge and Barry and I did nine years ago. And we are incredibly proud of where this program is today. So I, I, I believe that, that there was value in that. And I tried to stress to uh, everybody I talked to about this job is, you know, I, I understand there's really qualified candidates, but I, I can look you in the eye and tell you that I don't think there's anyone more qualified to be the next head coach of Bowling Green tomorrow. And I believe that in my heart. More back there? Ty, talk about the atmosphere in uh, Slater Family Ice Arena. How does that impact a, a, a hockey game? Yeah, it's, it's unique. You know, when we bring recruits on campus, we talk about Slater Family Ice Arena. And when we got here nine years ago, uh, it was obviously at a very low point. You know, the building had, you know, didn't look great from the outside. The, the parking lot needed work. The inside needed some work. And, and over the course of the last nine years, a lot of things have changed uh, cosmetically to Slater Family Arena. But when you come in to play at Slater Family Ice Arena, it's a difficult place to play. And you know, if there's 1,500 people in there or 5,000, it's a loud, difficult building. You know, part of it's because of the way it's built. You know, that low metal roof, you know, noise reflects from in there. And, and at the time, we just, we didn't have the team to make it real difficult. We knew it was going to be a difficult place to play, but we needed to have a better team to make it, you know, both difficult from a, from a competitive standpoint, but, but along with the, with the crowd involvement and the, and the bleacher creatures and the student support and the band. I mean, there's been a bunch of people over the last five, six years as, if we've, as we have really cranked this thing up who've said, man, Bowling Green's a hard place to play. Because I remember it being a hard place to play when I played here. And, and, and you know, Burge would remember coming up here as a player from Miami and it being a really difficult place to play. So I, I believe 100% we have a, a great home ice advantage in Slater Family Ice Arena. And I expect a bunch of people to continue to support our program. The support's been tremendous. And, and I believe that we're going to continue to make it a difficult place to play. This is for Bob. Um, 
I'm sorry, who are you? <laughs> uh, I'll, the jokes are mine. Oh, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Todd. You, you, you do you, sure, I'll do me. Uh, during this process, at what point did you realize that you had the best candidate right here in-house? You know, we, uh, like I said earlier, we, we talked to a lot of people, um, had a lot of great conversations, and when Ty expressed his vision, his plan for the program, he sold it like no other candidate did. And he spoke from the heart. Obviously, you saw that emotion come out today. Good job to get through that. Um, he spoke from the heart. He spoke about teaching and telling these guys not only um, how to play the game, but also how to, how to live their life. And, you know, at the end of the day, there was no one more passionate, more hungry to do a better job for this program in this university than Ty Eigner. Thank you. You're welcome. Ty, you're going to have to uh, hire some assistant coaches. What are the leadership characteristics that you'll look for in assistant coaches? You know, I think being an assistant coach for the last nine years, you know, so, so my, my career path has kind of been, you know, flipped. You know, usually you start as an assistant coach and then you become a head coach. And, and I, I started as a head coach. You know, I, I was actually at the time playing hockey and, and went back home to Minnesota and uh, at the time, Eric and I were, were dating, and, and I had an idea that she may be the one. And uh, the head coach job at my high school came open, and so I ultimately got it, and, and then I had a decision to make. So I became a head coach right away, and, and I was fortunate enough to have some real good people that were involved. And then when, I, when you know, Burge brought Barry and I here, you know, one of the things he valued, you know, my resume wasn't great. I'm sure there were a bunch of other people who had coached at a higher level that he could have hired, but one of the things one of the many things he taught, taught me throughout the past nine years was it has to be about people. Because this is a, you know, any, I see there's a bunch of coaches here and I, and I, and I want to say thanks to all you guys for coming out and supporting uh, myself and my family and our program today. But anybody who's ever coached before knows that this is, it's not really a, a, a job. It, it, it's how you make your living and it's what you do for, you know, to pay the bills, but it's not a job because it, it, you're, you're never off the clock and you're, you're always on call and, and you know, you, you end up you being a, you know, a authority figure to a bunch of young student athletes. And, and I, so I value the, the importance of having peop, the right people around. And I, I told, you know, I was asked that question in the interview process, you know, so if you get the job, you know, and, and you know, um, you have to hire two assistant coaches, what are you going to do? And my response was, well, I honestly don't want to put the cart before the horse because they don't have the job. And as I would take my dog for walks or mow the grass or, you know, lay awake at night staring at the ceiling, am I going to get this job? I would think about people, and I can, I can promise you this, we have to find the right people. We 100% we have to find the right people. I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me uh, via email, via text, via phone call about wanting to be a part of this staff. And I think it speaks to what we've done here for the past nine years. You know, I take great pride in, you know, as the process was going on, two, U, two WCHA head coaches called me and said, Iggs, what do we need to do to help, you, help get, get you this job? You deserve it. You've done it right. You guys have done it right. And I think if you ask people who are in hockey, you know, what's Bowling Green hockey all about? They will have a, a definitive opinion. You know, we're hard to play against. We've done things the right way. We didn't try to cut corners in any way in regards to this program. And so we're going to find people that believe the same thing. I've had a couple uh, informal conversations with, with potential candidates. And the one thing I told them, I said, I'm going to be transparent and honest with you throughout this process. And I'm going to find people that are as passionate about continuing this thing and, and as passionate about Bowling Green and coaching and, and being great mentors as I am. And, and that, uh, because I realize how important that is. It, it's, it's, it's absolutely critical. You know, you, you, I've, I've told people, you know, what we do over at Slater Family Ice Arena, we are not splitting atoms. So I don't have to hire the smartest person in the world. I just can't hire the dumbest. So mm -hmm. that's the plan. Last opportunity. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, give some logistics here, and then Ty, did you have a one last statement you wanted to make? Um, obviously, thank you very much for uh, everybody who took the time from their busy day to day to 
you know, come out and support myself and my family in the hockey program, and I see some, you know, alumni in the back with their hats on backwards because now that rule doesn't apply to them. I see uh, some guys I played with. I see other coaches. I see people involved in the university at a bunch of different levels, and, and I, I'm greatly appreciative for you to, to come out here and, and do this. Uh, Scooter, you have my uh, present? Can you, can you bring that on up? Um, you know, I, I referenced before that um, at the end of the year, Barry and I felt that we owed it to the players to give them an evaluation of their year because we were the ones that made that. Thanks, Scooter. And I think we need to give Scooter a round of applause because it's rare, it's rare he makes a public appearance, you know. <laughs> He, uh, he typically likes to put himself out there on YouTube. He's not, he's not necessarily a people person. He's more of a social media guy. But uh, I appreciate that, Scoot. But as we talk to each individual player, you know, one of the things we talk about is, is okay, moving forward, you know, we lost, we had seven seniors, and obviously we lose Lucas Craigs and we lose Ryan Bednard. And so, you know, that, that's a, a fairly good size group. And... Uh, you know, we ask them, what is your opinion on leadership moving forward? And, and if we had to pick captains or if we had to pick leaders, who, who do you think would, could be that? And, you know, um, the fact that I'm still here and, and I've thought this through and I talked with Bob about it, I think uh, I couldn't think of a better time to, to name our captains for next year because these players are ready to get to work. They've been working hard the last two weeks in the weight room. Uh, they're pushing hard through the finish academically. And, and I trust... What, the, what their peers have told me about them. And I trust the player's opinion because ultimately at the end of the day as a coach, you can say and do all you want. And you can put together the best practice plan and the best you know, game plan. Ultimately, the players control the program. And they were uh, very positive in terms of our leadership. And there was a bunch of people that they talked about. Uh, three players distinguished themselves uh, amongst their peers, and so I'd like to introduce our, our captain for 2019-2020, Alec Rauhauser, and assistant captains Fred Letourneau and Connor Ford. Okay, with that, we're going to close things out. If you've been to our head coach press conferences before, we're going to switch things up just a little bit. Uh, we're going to give uh, Coach Eigner about 20 or 25 minutes to do meet and greets, and then we're going to take him off site to uh, meet with the media uh, afterwards for one on ones. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, Ziggy. Okay.